The Pistons are the basketball champions of the world. I can remember back when they were playing in the Joe Lewis Arena in the Silver Dome, and uh, my uncle would take us down to see the Piston Lakers games in the regular season. I mean, it was cool, man, watching Joe D and Isaiah and Bill and Rick and Dennis and the microwave, all those guys, man, they really made us proud as a state. The Pistons repeat, and the Motor City still reigns supreme. I just think that team had a lot of pride, you know, a lot of pride, and they played with so much, uh, so much confidence, and, you know, those are two of the similarities that I see in our team and their team is, you know, we play with so much pride, man. We play with so much pride and, and so much confidence. There is Larry Brown. You know what his goal is here, I'm sure. Give the Pistons a chance to win an NBA title. None of these guys were anointed. These guys were not billed as these can't-miss superstars who are going to carry teams to championships for years to come. Each and every guy here has something to prove. If you can bring that together like we did this year, it's a powerful force, man. And the Pistons will tie the club record with 13 wins in a row. Everybody really pulls for everybody. You can feel that guys are in your corner. When you have that bond and that cohesiveness, it, it really makes your team that much better. And those are, I think, the things that make special teams. And we have that. Another team fails to score 70 against the Pistons, an NBA record. This team is a lot like this city. It's about a hard-working group of guys that respect our game, do everything they can to help their teammates, and ultimately have made a city real proud because of their work ethic. I think that's why so many people were drawn to this team. They knew this was like a bunch of unselfish guys pulling together, and I think that that will be the overriding theme that people will remember about this team. The Pistons have delivered a third NBA World Championship to the Motor City. Terrible feeling for a Detroit team that was the number one seed. They won 50 games for the second year in a row. For the Detroit Pistons, the 2003 season had come to a bitter end. After reaching the Eastern Conference Finals, they were swept by the New Jersey Nets. Uh, that was probably the sickest feeling I've ever had playing a game of basketball. After years of frustration, the Pistons realized that a change was needed and that it would have to start at the top. I knew that we need a coach who's going to be a perfectionist, who's going to be on the guys, who's going to push, but do it with a certain level of humanity. I think I can make a difference in terms of teaching them how to play and the right way to play. And I'm hopeful that this franchise is going to play at a high level for a long time. That's, that's my challenge. Larry Brown was now coaching his seventh NBA team. And the Pistons that he inherited possessed a solid core of players, including Chauncey Billups and Richard Hamilton, the team's talented backcourt and the player who had become the heart and soul of the Pistons, Ben Wallace, a two-time Defensive Player of the Year. LeBron James inside for Ogowskis, blocked by Ben! Ahead to Chauncey, stop and go on Davis, straight little reverse. Ben Wallace is the foundation here. I mean, th this house is not built uh, without Ben Wallace. Eric Snow, left wings to Derek Coleman, baseline drive, Ben blocks the shot! He's a self-sacrificing player. He will do anything to help his team win. Wait, popping into a turnover, bad block, again! You know, to me, great players make other players around them better. Um, ben Wallace does that every possession. You know, Rip Hamilton is growing into that category. Chauncey Billups is a guy that is starting to come into, it, into his own. He's finally found a home. As Detroit opened training camp, Brown began to assess the other pieces of the puzzle, deciding how they would fit into his vision of a winner. The roster featured a blend of ingredients, including the potential of young Tayshawn Prince, the experience of former sixth man of the year Corliss Williamson, and the inside presence of Mehmet Okor. 
but Detroit had also added savvy veterans like Lindsey Hunter, returning to the place where his career began, plus center Eldon Campbell and explosive forward Darvin Ham. Duncan Darvin does it again. You know, Coach Brown drilled us. Hey, this is the way we're going to play, and, I'm, and I don't care what you think, and I don't care what you say. You're going to play this way. It's my way. We had one goal. He told us first, if you want to take the championship, we're going to start to do this today. And yet, for the first two months of the season, the Pistons would struggle to hit their stride. And he goes out of bounds. So a flat start for the Pistons. But you bring in uh, a whole different staff. Uh, th there's a transition period. And unfortunately, you have to have that transition period during the season. And after the first 29 games this year, we were 16 and 13. A layup. You don't see many layups on the Larry Brown team. It was tough, you know, not just for him, but for the players too. So it took us a while, you know, to, to, for, for us to get used to him and him to get used to us. But gradually, the Pistons began to adapt to Brown's system and became the kind of team he had envisioned. They're sharing the ball and trusting each other. Learning the game mentally, you know, going through the uh, rigorous day-to-day -day practices physically. I can feel myself getting better and better each day as a player. Uh, I can see us getting better as a group. Knocked it away, Wallace with a steal. Alley oop, the back. Sharing the ball and the spotlight, the Pistons were forging a growing sense of chemistry, and soon they would reel off an impressive string of victories. The Pistons are starting to play the way Larry wants them to play. Rick Nolan's touch feed to Ross. Skeet is out there, and there's Darko with a steal. And it makes a nice feed to James, to Darvin Ham. How about these Pistons? What a finish. Hamilton and Ginobili. Rick. Back up to Johnson. Leans. have tied the franchise record with a lucky 15. Tying the record of the championship team of 14 years ago. But as the calendar turned to February, the Red Hot Pistons were suddenly gripped by a midwinter chill. The euphoria of winning had given way to a frustrating losing streak, and it became clear that something was still missing. Nothing working right now for the Pistons. The Pistons dropped their sixth in a row. They still don't have that one great player. Joe Dumars would address the team's glaring need by trading for Rasheed Wallace, a talented player with a turbulent past. Whatever I could bring to the table to, to help us make that gallop for that, for that title cup, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to do. His credit, he came in here just trying to fit in. And uh, he fit in the first minute he stepped in that locker room. The only problem with Rashid Wallace is maybe he cares too much. And I don't look that at that as a negative. What a play! Rashid Wallace! He was the missing piece. He made everybody on the team better. Getting him to lit up was having the title run. I mean, the guy was an all-star. The guy can score inside, outside. The guy's a great defender. And I don't think we didn't even know how good of a defender he was until he got here. A free pop shot by Rasheed Wallace. Uh, I just thought he was a perfect fit. I thought he embodied what we wanted to be here. Here's a guy that wants to win. Here's a guy that's dedicated. He's unselfish. He's a great teammate. I just thought that, you know what? That guy's a Detroit Piston. Van Der Rip, four on one. alley oop to Rasheed for a slam. And after a, oh, a week or two, maybe, Rashid seemed to uh, be comfortable uh, in this system. And then the Pistons just started to roll. Rashid with a steal and the feed. Rip with a stuff. Make it 21 to 9. You can deny. What a stop that was by Detroit. Get it out of here. Nice cut inside by Ooh. Anderson. Shot rejected by Ben. Saved by Lindsey. Ahead to rip behind him to Ben for the jam. We went on a eight-game win streak where we held teams 
you know, below 70 points, I think five or six of the games. Uh, I think that's when people started really believing around here that we have a chance to win this thing. The Pistons will do it again. They're going to do it again. Five in a row. An NBA record has been added to this afternoon. Another team fails to score 70. With Rashid Wallace making a difference at both ends of the floor, the Pistons won 20 of their last 24 regular season games and would enter the playoffs with a wave of momentum and a newfound swagger. Well, we, we have a chip on our shoulder, man. Ever since she came over, it was like everybody said, all right, now they, now they the team to beat them. Before that, you know, nobody gave us a shot to do anything. There was an undertone in the community that, you know something? The Pistons are serious about making a run at this thing. Entering the playoffs against Milwaukee, Detroit had reason to feel confident, but too much confidence could be dangerous. I just think you got to win four games, you know, in this series. That's the way you got to look at it. You got, can't look past any one game. It's, you just got to be ready to play. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the excitement of NBA playoff basketball as we get set for game one of round one between the Pistons and the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks can't stop us. The Bucks didn't want to come here. They didn't want to come here. They tried to miss the flight. And Milwaukee would never get off the ground in game one as Detroit recorded 14 steals, a team playoff record. And after shutting the Bucks down, the Pistons stampeded right past them. The Pistons would cruise to a 26-point victory, and their playoff drive couldn't have gotten off to a better start. Yeah, we felt we played the way we wanted to play. You know, we're going to try to duplicate that, and definitely they're going to make some adjustments, and they're going to play a little harder, and they're going to do some different things, you know, to try to, uh, you know, make, their, make the game two a little different. Yet they couldn't have imagined just how different it would be. Not only did Michael Red burn them with his outside shooting, the Pistons would hurt themselves with a series of costly mistakes. All the good feelings of game one had vanished as Detroit let the home court advantage slip away. And their defeat would serve as a jarring reminder of just how treacherous the postseason could be. Uh, it was just too easy for them. The first game, we won too easily. And the Milwaukee Bucks have upset the Detroit Pistons. They have tied the series at one. And so they relaxed a little bit. Even though we were telling them not to, it was easy to do. It was, it's just human nature. From that, we learned a lot, you know, knowing that when we win the first game, we can not relax on the second. It was a wake-up call. Their call had arrived early in the playoffs, and the Pistons would answer it immediately when the series moved to Milwaukee. First, they would take back the home court advantage by capturing game three. And then, with a victory in game four, Detroit put a stranglehold on the series. Prince from downtown. The Pistons take a three games to one lead in this best of seven. Returning home for game five, the Pistons would never allow the Bucks into the contest, closing out the series in resounding fashion. Milwaukee was now behind them, but the memory would remain. They challenged us. And we responded really well. And um, I saw us growing up. We took a step forward there. As Detroit prepared to host New Jersey in the conference semifinals, they were confronted with the painful reminder of how last season ended, a humiliating defeat at the hands of the Nets. Last year, we were the number one uh, team in the Eastern Conference going into the playoffs. And, uh, you know, they swept us out. They've the team that really dominated this conference for two straight years. And uh, to get to where we are now, you got to go through them. We're set for game one of the Eastern Conference semifinals between the Pistons and the New Jersey Nets. The Pistons had long been burning for revenge. And as the series began, they wasted no time seizing their chance. Got swatted by Ben. Memo has it to rip. Rip up the right side, alley-oop to take shot for one fine jam. Holding the Nets to just 56 points, Detroit raced off with game one. Left corners to Jefferson, a rainbow three way short. Chauncey with a board, poor court to oh, take shot. Yeah. Flipped it up, back over his head. You know when it's going your way.
right away, George, when you can make a shot like that. And after a slow start in game two, the Pistons would roar past New Jersey once again. Ahead for Rip. Alley who ends up thrown down from the big fella. Trotsky with a drive, slips it up and in. That's a big time basket right there. They were down 12 at the break and outscored the Nets 61 34 in the second half. 2 0 Detroit heading to New Jersey. We take it as we still got a long way to get to where we want to get to. You know, we can't relax. We still ain't accomplished nothing. We up 2-0, but they swept us last year. We can't let up at all, you know, because they're gonna be ready. You know what I'm saying? And we just gotta be we just gotta be more and more prepared for them to come out and try to bring the A game. Yet all the words of caution didn't seem to help. The Nets had brought their best game, and the Pistons couldn't match it. Jefferson getting inside. What a move by Richard Jefferson. We probably got a little too overconfident in how easy the games were here in Detroit. And so when we went to uh, New Jersey, we may have, like, slacked off a little. The Nets 82, the Pistons 64. So the Nets bounce back after the two losses. And so that gave them some energy, and that gave Jason Kidd the freedom to do a lot of other things. He, they, then their crowd got into it. So we found ourselves 2-2. Two -two. As the Nets win both games at home, wire to wire over the Detroit Pistons, and a tied domestic seven, two to two. Unfortunately, the first two games were too easy, and we got a little full of ourselves, and they brought us down to earth pretty quickly. So now, all of a sudden, it becomes uh, a three-game series. Full house at the Palace. This is the pivotal game five. Though the first four games had all been blowouts, this contest would be a tense drama. The Pistons surged to a fourth quarter lead, but they still weren't able to shake the Nets as the teams battled for control of the series. And as game five entered its final furious moments, New Jersey was coming on strong. Jason Kidd all the way. What a play by Kidd. Jason Kidd gets the Nets the lead with 108 to go. With New Jersey leading by three and just seconds left in the game, only a miracle could bail out the Pistons. Pistons need a three, and they have just under three seconds to do it. Here's Chauncey Phillips. Here it is. He's got it. He's got it. Chauncey Phillips hits the three. Overtime. I thought that that, that shot would give us the momentum going into overtime. And, uh, you know, it gave us some momentum, but we just had so many guys foul out. You know, we had four of our five starters foul out, and we just didn't have enough. In a war of attrition, the Nets survived. Scalabrini for three and a big one. Ryan Scalabrini with his third beyond the arc. New Jersey had prevailed in a triple overtime classic. And for the Pistons, it was hard to imagine a more bitter defeat. There's maybe only one other game five that was as, as disappointing as that one to me in my entire life, and that was Isaiah with the pass that Bird stole in Boston. That was a game five as well. Those two games were as demoralizing as I've ever been about some games. The next day when I came in, though, I said to Larry and the, and the staff, I said, you know, this could be a defining moment for this team because either we're going to fold tent and continue to say we're contenders or we're going to bounce back from this and move on to new heights. But when game six began, it was the Nets who were soaring. Leading 13 to two, they seemed ready to send Detroit home for the summer. Detroit, you know, said moments ago, just the kind of start the Pistons could not hold on to. New Jersey is a front running team. They're on an 11-0 run, and they are out and pushing. It wasn't unexpected that New Jersey would come out with a lot of emotion and a lot of hype and uh, and the guy who, who was sitting behind me and saying, N-E-T-S, <laughs> that guy was going to be up screaming and stuff, OK? I knew that was going to happen. It was how we were going to respond to that. We got to get into something, guys. We're acting hey, We don't need to take a bad shot. Our big guys can't be standing out here. We got to get down there and get a rebound. We're still in the game. We got to get a stop. On the brink of elimination, the time had come for the Pistons to make their stand. 
they had withstood the Nets early onslaught. And now, drawing strength from their defense, they were starting to claw their way back. Yeah, in the locker room, we said before the game, it wasn't about winning or losing. You know, for us, it was about going out and compete. We got to go out and play these guys. We got to fight these guys. And, um, and then we'll live with the outcome. Quickly gaining ground on the Nets, the Pistons would take the lead by halftime, and they refused to relinquish it, even as the game was coming down to its crucial stretch. Dishes to Rasheed, turn it got, rattled it in. And in the game's final seconds, Richard Hamilton sealed the Nets' fate. Hamilton, the kid bumping out. Richard Hamilton with a big time shot. Winning when few thought they could, the Pistons had begun to reveal their true character. At the buzzer and the Detroit Pistons facing elimination on the road. They win tonight. I think a lot of teams would have packed it in after that tough loss at home in triple overtime, but you know, I was real proud of them and I told them that. And right then and there I knew this was becoming a special group. Returning home for game seven, the Pistons had come too far to let the series escape from their grasp, and the outcome would never be in doubt. To have a game seven in our building, give that crowd a little something to cheer about. You know, felt that energy in the building. And, um, you know, we just continue to make plays, we continue to get stopped, we continue to hit shots, you know, full on and pretty much around. And Wallace ingested that rebound. It looked like the trunk of an elephant. Mike James! Oh! Wallace! On the finish! The Detroit Pistons will win game seven. They'll be a new champion in the Eastern Conference of the NBA. And Detroit. Heading to Indiana for the conference finals, Detroit would face its former coach, Rick Carlisle, who had taken the Pacers to new heights. They led the league in wins, uh, and uh, you know we realized how talented they were. They run all our plays. We run all their plays. It wasn't about X's and O's. It was just about who won it most. In game one, Detroit battled its way to the lead and carried it into the final minutes. But while the Pacers were on the ropes, they had the one player who could deliver a knockout. This is what we want. Let's keep playing. We're jabbing, jabbing, jabbing. The overhead right is coming. He got a round of pick. Here's the three. Reggie Miller. And the Pacers at home win game one. And we sort of figured they had stole one from us. Felt like we had let one slip away. Determined to bolster the Pistons' confidence, Rasheed Wallace issued a bold proclamation prior to game two. Now y'all put it in the front page, back page, middle page, wherever, headliners, column one or two, we will win game two. Yeah, back it off. We will win game two. Everyone probably thought that, but no one had enough in them to say it. And so he was able, I believe he was able to say what everyone was thinking. Wallace's words only fueled the intensity of game two, which featured 26 blocked shots, 19 by Detroit. You know, it wasn't the, quote, beautiful style of basketball they play out west. O'Neal sends that one back. It was more of a smash mouth uh, football game, if you want to say. That was a man block. That was a war, man. That was an unbelievable defensive slugfest. Detroit found just enough offense to build a slim lead late in the contest. But just like in game one, they would face another pacer rally and the prospect of another demoralizing defeat. We felt momentum slipping in that game. I was like, man, there's another game about to be tied up, man. This, this could be trouble. And once again, it was Reggie Miller who would take center stage in the game's decisive play as the Pistons tried to hang on in the closing seconds. Block, Tayshaun Prince. How did Prince get there? I mean, he was literally at half court, and Reggie was at the top of the key. I didn't think it was any way possible for him to get this shot. We go out there, we, we try to get after you for 48 minutes, and you know, that play at the end of the game was that last minute. I tell you what, he laid out his.
his entire body for this play. Tayshawn's play against Reggie in game two certainly symbolizes who we are. Dumars had shaped these Pistons in the mold of the championship teams he played on. They too had built their success on a foundation of defense. You're not going to win it offensively. You've got to get to it. Everybody yep. defensive. That's what I'm looking at. I got to have the defense. Blue collar, defensive, just kind of in your face. 48 minutes. We're going to win. And you're going to have to accept that or else. Now look at the triple team as Sally and Rodman collapsed on Jordan. These guys have that same blue collar in your face mentality that we had. And like their predecessors, the new Pistons had a potent backcourt. Chauncey Billups and Richard Hamilton. Two on one to rip for the jam. And now. out of here, man. Hopefully we ain't got to come back here, go home, handle our business, and we'll see y'all in Detroit. The Pistons look to ride their momentum back to the comfort of home. But at the start of game six, the Palace turned uncomfortably quiet as the Pacers quickly took command. Indiana with a 13-point lead. The Pistons were in need of a spark, but their offense had turned ice cold. And the Pistons have gone four and a half minutes. Without a field goal. We couldn't hit the side of the basket, let alone hit a basket. Look, we've had every great shot. We missed three throws. They made shots. We can't expect everything good to happen, but our defense can suffer. As always, the Pistons' ferocious defense was doing its part. All they needed now was for the offense to give them a chance. We knew that we would, would somehow be able to get the lead down the stretch that it'd be hard for them to overcome. Chauncey Billups to try to tie it. Does! Outside jumper won't oh, go. Tipped up for Gene Wallace. Oh, boy. A deafening crowd of over 22,000 at the Palace. They can sense it. Tayshaun Prince got it! And every time you go to that board and, and cross one out, you're that much closer. It just gives you a, a great feeling to know that, that you have an opportunity to go out and live out a childhood dream. In the Western Conference, Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal continued to cast their shadow over the rest of the league. The powerful Lakers seemed larger than life. The more you win, the more bigger I get. And the more bigger I get, I get strong, and the more stronger I get, nobody can stop me. And stopping Los Angeles had become a more imposing challenge than ever. Along with a star-studded cast and championship experience, they even appeared to have destiny on their side in the playoffs. They get it to Fisher. He scores! Oh, Derek God. Fisher scores at the buzzer! After Fisher's amazing shot and a conference finals victory over Minnesota, an NBA title seemed inevitable. For the fourth time over the last five seasons, the Lakers try to claim another world title. And we find ourselves back to where we want to be, and that's having a chance to win a fourth title. And, uh, you know, now we just have to go get it. Good evening, 
everybody, and welcome to the excitement of the NBA Finals, Game 1. You know, it's a dream come true. And you're just trying to cherish it, take totally advantage of it. This is it right here, you know. First team to four win, you know, you get nothing but second place. Los Angeles is an overwhelming, prohibitive favorite to win this series. Most think four or five games, few selected it'll go six or the distance to seven, but that's why they play the games. Well, people have been underestimating us all year, but it ain't nothing that we ain't used to. So, you know, regardless of what people say, once that ball was thrown up, it's us against you. Mondo against Mondo. We knew that we'd be major, major underdogs, and you playing against a team like the Lakers with the personnel that they have and the coaching staff that they have, that are just trying to gain some respect. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, Lakers! Time for some action, baby. This is what it is right here. We turn the TV on, we pick up a newspaper, eight three one underdogs, David Goliath, they can't win. And we were just sitting there saying, you have got to be kidding me. These, pe these people are out of their mind. And as the finals began, Detroit wasted no time showing the doubters that they belonged. Rasheed Wallace opens with the three ball. Eldon Campbell offensive rebound was hit in the face, got it back. Phillips open three, drains it. See, if there's an X factor in this series, I think it's Chauncey Phillips. And Detroit's floor leader would set the tone for his team's fearless approach, taking it right at the heart of the Laker defense. Phillips off a screen, drives, wraparounds, good. Phillips has been terrific. Too many fouls, too many turnovers for the first quarter, okay? So you know what you have to do now. Kobe and Shaq had seen the Lakers through many finals battles, and it didn't take long for LA's one-two punch to have the Pistons reeling. Slam dunk by Shaq on the entry from Rick Fox. Kobe probing, getting the pick from Shaq. Now weaves his way down the middle underneath, lays it up and in. He can feel the Lakers start to get into this game. Hamilton has to make a beautiful effort to catch it, but he turns it over, threw it deep. It'll be easy for Kobe Bryant. Lakers laid it on the one-handed slam. With the Lakers gathering steam, Larry Brown knew it was time to steady his Pistons in their first appearance on the game's biggest stage. We got to get it in scoring area. We don't have to rush in anything. We just got to calm down and play. The Pistons were facing their first finals test, and they would provide an emphatic answer. Tayshawn goes in for the left-handed slam. You can sense the Pistons getting more confident as this game goes on. Ahead to rip deep to Corliss for the dunk. They thought we was a joke. They really didn't take us serious. And so now we had to let them know we're not going to back down from no one. We're going to go out there, we're going to fight, and we're going to show them that we didn't just come here to show up. Folks, get me to a television set. Game one looks like it's going to be a great one. And we got to defend. Make them shoot a jump shot with a hand up. That's all we're conscious of doing. We gotta... By the fourth quarter, the Pistons had shown they were here to stay. And now they were ready to give the Lakers a first-hand demonstration of the league's toughest defense. Down the lane, flips it up, blocked by Ben. Five on the shot. Here comes O'Neal. Left block, jump, turn around, air ball. Your offense is failing you because you're not moving the ball. I don't think they knew this was coming. As far as our defense, they didn't have a clue. We definitely made a mistake. Obi leaning in, shot blocked by Ben. There's that Detroit D all over the Lakers here tonight. Ahead to rip, rip to the rim and jam. And the Lakers folks are in deep, deep trouble here in Los Angeles. We gotta win three minutes. Come on, hey, come we on. gotta win three minutes. Come on, baby. Right. Come on. Over to the left side is Peyton and Campbell blocks Peyton's driving layup. Now Chauncey Phillips looking for a fast break opportunity drive past Kobe for the left-handed layup. And now the man who had started it all, Chauncey Billups, would finish off the Lakers to complete a stunning game one. Billups, open shot, knocked it down. What a huge jump shot by Chauncey Billups. Mr. Big Shot has turned out the lights on the Lakers. A phenomenal achievement for Detroit here tonight. Get out of here. Yeah. Go show, baby. Let's go, Blue. We ain't did nothing yet. We ain't did nothing yet. We're a team that, you know, we never scared. You know, we're going to go out there and play and have each other's back, and that's what we did tonight. It puts a lot of pressure on us, on us for the next game. This is the type of team that they come out, they play aggressive defense, they play well, 
They just wanted it a little bit more than we wanted it tonight. Coach, you, you've been here before. The uh, last time, your last trip to the finals with that opening game victory uh, on the road. It's a long memory. No, it was a good memory. Um, a lot of my players called me from Philly, kind of reminded me of what went on after we won game one. I got on the back of the bus after this game one and um, told them, you know, we had won a tough game one and then uh, kind of felt pretty proud of ourselves. And then lo and behold, Phil got them ready. They won four straight. And they all looked at me and said, we're not the same team. I said, well, that's not what I'm worried about. You got the same coach. So, <laughs> so. For Larry Brown and the Pistons, there was little time to savor the feeling of game one. Brown would put his team right back to work at practice, the place where his influence has always been most strongly felt. He really wants guys to play the right way. And, and, and that he's, you hear him saying that all the time, play the right way, you know, be unselfish, be a good teammate. And it never meant more and rang truer than with this team. Hey, hey, Josh, as soon as you hit, He's going back door and we won't sprint. Come on, let's go. We've had games this year where we won by 20, 25 points. And he's hammering home so hard right after the game in the locker room about four or five plays that we didn't execute perfectly on. And I thought that set the tone throughout the entire year. Hey, you don't have that. You got Ben, and Ben, you got shot, we just play. Right next to one thing that I figured out about him, he wants to make me the best player that I can possibly become. Anything else doesn't matter to him. He don't care about nothing else but winning and, and teaching. Hey, we got rip. You didn't have it. You're just probably diving. All right. And then we got Ben getting new charts. The philosophy behind Coach Brown, just playing hard, playing smart, playing together. And if you do those three things, you'll have fun. And Rasheed dies, Ben. Coach Brown encouraged everybody to go out and play the same way on both ends of the floor. And to see the guys come out on the defensive end with the same energy and intensity that they have on the offensive end, you know, it takes you back to when you first started playing basketball, when you didn't really care about who scored or how many minutes you played. The end result is about winning. I think Coach Brown put a lot of the love back into basketball. He's a Hall of Fame coach who still gets out, and if he sees your kid out there messing around with the ball, he'll go out there and really give your kid some real hard, honest, genuine coaching. And uh, that's, you know, that says a lot about the type of guy he is. Hey, hey, we talked about they're gonna, they're gonna come out with a lot of energy. San Antonio beat their ass the first two. One, two, three. night than last night and no I, I slept well but you know you go to bed with a bad taste you wake up with one we anticipate them playing you know a great game they've they've bounced back every time they've had some adversity the lakers now know it's going to be a fight i didn't think they really expected it now they're ready for it an interesting thing happened on the way to game two the pistons suddenly became real for the los angeles lakers it is crisis night as game two began, the Lakers looked to restore some order to the basketball world. But the notion that L.A. was supposed to be the superior team still didn't seem to be getting through to the Pistons. Steal here, and here's Phillips. That's another turnover for Kobe. They could take a stranglehold in this series if they could beat L.A. tonight another jam for the big fella. With another game starting to slip away, Phil Jackson looked beyond his veteran stars to a little used rookie. Gotta have a third score here tonight. Who will strike for the Lakers? Luke straight away, three-pointer. Got it! How about this youngster from Arizona? Let's get penetration, Luke. See what's happening off the penetration. Span the basketball right to your triangle. Now it's Luke. Puff fake, puts it down, attacks, gets inside, hits Shaq. A beautiful pass from Luke Walton, who's keeping the Lakers right in the thick of this. Ignited by Walton, 
LA would open a double-digit lead, finally looking like the team everyone had picked to dismantle the Pistons. The Lakers are in control of this game and played much better than they did in the first. Look, let me explain something to you. They're supposed to yes, beat us, sir. all right? Yes, we ain't supposed to be here, <laughs> especially the way we played the first half in the first few minutes. Hungry. All right? Right here. The Lakers had delivered their best shot, yet the Pistons were still standing. And with a late flurry in the third quarter, Detroit would erase a 12-point deficit. And suddenly, the Lakers are coming unglued. Malone goes down, flops, Rasheed in. Ben Wallace stuffs it up over Kobe. Six consecutive points. And now we got ourselves in a value. We're back in a situation where they're back in the game. I couldn't write this up. Fourth quarter, we were down 12 in their building, the NBA champs. Come on, All right? Come on, hey, come do what we do. do. And we're right here. We do got to just play. The drive, Detroit leads it. And the crowd very uneasy. With less than a minute left, Detroit seemed to have the game all but wrapped up. That might be it, as Ben Wallace has made this a six point game. Closing in as an eight point underdog again on their second straight win in Los Angeles. The Pistons are doing the unthinkable. Larry Brown says no foul, no foul. The Lakers will be searching for the outside shot. Shaq's got it back and one. Shaquille O'Neal gives the Lakers an opportunity. Still, the Pistons would have another chance to put the game out of reach. Coming over to the left side, down the middle, he goes. The runner banks it, doesn't get it. Shaq with a rebound. Devastated by Kobe's dagger, the Pistons could only watch as the rejuvenated Lakers soared past them in overtime and even the series. Back to Walt, puts it down, drives baseline, up to Shaq on the alley who slams it down. 99-91, a magnificent win. Oh yeah, they're, they're disheartened right now. They got their one, but they thought they should have had two. You know, we came here, should have won two games. You know, we're, we're crushed. I mean, shoot, that was, we had a winnable game, and everybody's in that locker room down. You know, we just got to bounce back. An NBA Finals that is better than we hoped for. Detroit and Los Angeles are even at a victory apiece, and the scene now shifts east to the Palace for three games. Motown is fro town. This ain't Hollywood, baby. This is for real. I think that, you know, they never seen nobody like our fans before, so it's going to be fun. Where we from? Detroit! Where we from? Detroit! Diamonds and Game Time! Diamonds and Game Time! Dogs in the house! Ooh. Dogs in the house! Ooh. Granted, they're a good team, but we ain't scared of them, man. I don't know why y'all cats think we scared of the Lakers or, you know, like the Lakers are this dominant force. You know, we ain't scared of them cats, man. How important is Game 3 where the two teams are tied after the first two? Well, the winner of Game 3 has gone on to capture the NBA championship 87% of the time. How far we go back? Red light, green light. How far we go back? Red light, green light. At 6'9", the center wearing the big red three from Virginia Union University. Ba 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 Ben Wallace. Hey, play together, play hard. Come on, man. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One, two, three. Let's play go. hard. Detroit. Let's play some basketball. Kobe Bryant spins to the baseline away from Tayshawn. Leaning high glasser. No. Rasheed with the rebound. Four court lob to rip to the basket. No, but it's slammed up and in by Tayshawn. 
Many questioned how Detroit would respond from its crushing Game 2 defeat, but the question was quickly answered. The Pistons scored the first eight points and stole the Lakers' momentum, as Ben Wallace used his tenacity to shackle Shaquille. The Lakers look discombobulated. Everything's going their way. We got to start working out here now. But like Wallace on Shaq, Tayshawn Prince was hounding Kobe Bryant at every turn. And the hero of game two would be reduced to a virtual zero in game three. Kobe Bryant was held without a field goal in 22 minutes in the first half. While L.A. sputtered, Detroit kicked into high gear. Deep right dish to Devin George, triple try, no. Off the iron to Rashid, to Chauncey, way up to Rip. He'll lay it up and in. Motown is rocking, baby. If we want to run, Rip, you got to get us in something. We ran drag one time, got it dumb. And with the help of their unrelenting defense, Detroit proceeded to run L.A. right out of the building. In the first finals game in the Motor City in 14 years, the Pistons were hitting on all cylinders, dominating the Lakers from start to finish. And Richard Hamilton continued his breakout postseason with a game-high 31 points. He'll turn deep right, fire, and fill it up. The Palace is rocking. The Lakers are reeling. Russ Hamilton is outscoring Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant combined. Derek Fisher kicks it over to Walton. Knocked away by Campbell. He's open. Can the big fella lumber in? Go for it. Oh, yeah, baby. Rock the house. Oh, a left-handed jam by number 41. And loving it here. Game three was a laugher, but to everyone's surprise, the Pistons were doing the laughing. Lindsey hustles it back to Ben, who dishes it inside to Rip, who scores it off the square. Count that baby and a foul. Wow. It's going to be a record-breaking defensive performance. The Detroit Pistons hold the Los Angeles Lakers to under 70 points for the first time in NBA playoff history. They're up two games to one on the Lakers. They smashed them tonight. Hey, we only got one game left. That's the way we're looking at. Hey, together, play hard. One, two, three. Play hard. Let's go, y'all. I don't know how we could defend any better. In the second half, I don't know how we could play any better. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to game four of the NBA Finals. The palace is rocking perhaps like never before. And tonight, the Pistons could push the Lakers to the limit. It's a high stay in the moment. Yeah. You ain't seen my commercial? <laughs> yeah, I've yeah, seen your commercial. Yeah. That's Which it, huh? That's all I think about. It. <laughs> it's now or never for the Los Angeles Lakers. And in the 58 years of the NBA championship series, no team has ever come back from a 3-1 deficit, and that's what the Lakers are facing if they lose tonight. They're going to come after us right from the beginning. we got to be aggressive as they are. Desperate to finally assert their dominance, the Lakers would start by unleashing the full force of Shaq. And he jams him with one hand. He got him right under the rack. Not a bad way to begin. Buck sets the table. Got Shaq again on the pass. Backs him down. Can't stop him. Up over the top. Ben Wallace is a strong guy. And right now, Shaq's making him look almost like a kid. Backing down on Ben. Turn slams it over on top of him. There was no stopping O'Neal. Hey, they, they're scoring too easy. We can't let that. You gotta help Ben, all right? But the Lakers were struggling to help Shaq, and the Pistons would respond to the one-man assault with a total team effort. Four court to Chauncey. Alley-oop to Rasheed. Bryant gets it back topside, down the lane, missed the floater, rebound, tapped outside of Rasheed. Ahead to Chauncey, this will be a bunny, he jammed. Uh, relax, don't force the ball. Look for high percentage action, high percentage shot. It was clear in this game that the Lakers were looking to ride Shaq just as far as he could take them. Feed to Shaq, turns inside and flips Ooh. it and fills it over Eldon. And we're even after three. We got 12 minutes to play together. Defense is great, but we ain't got anything down that end to resemble an offense. Come on, play the right way, let's go. By now, 
the diesel was running low on fuel. But the Pistons had an inexhaustible source of energy, drawing strength from their belief in each other. Inside to Fox, powers it up, blocked by Elvin Campbell. Great block, and a run out now by Rip. Rip in the lane for the hanging gun. He hit it! He hit it! Back to Rip on the wing. Guns with three on the clock, and he got it! Pistons by four. Rip Hamilton with two. Huge, huge hoops. While Detroit was surging, L.A. was unraveling. Cut by Kobe, walked in the lane when he looked up and saw Van and Rasheed and Tayshaun. Oh, and now Kobe draws a technical. And the Lakers are blowing their cool. And the Lakers want a timeout. Look, this tempo is ours, right? But we got to get great shots. The Pistons had wanted Rasheed Wallace for a moment like this, and now he would seize it. Rashid with a screen. Rip goes to Rashid. Three and a clock. Turn around. Gun over Met. But oh! Dingo, he oh! got it. He hits it. Back mid left to Rashid. Turns into a double team. Fires. Oh! Oh! Pistons 84, the Lakers 78. Payshot backs in from the right side. Dishes foul line to Rasheed up, gunning, got it. Rasheed Wallace has been sensational. Right in the heart, dagger in the heart. Rasheed Wallace and the Pistons are headed for a 3-1 stranglehold, and Detroit wrapping up its third win. One more, baby. Get it done, man. Yeah. One more, Let's go. Get it, Let's let's get it done. Ow. One more, baby. Let's get it done. One more. One more. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the excitement of Game 5 of the NBA Finals. This crowd's going crazy. They know the Pistons have a chance to bring the Motor City a third NBA crowd. They can close out the Lakers tonight. Almost unthinkable storyline has unfolded in this NBA final. We got our trophy in the building. Check this out, man. Check this out. This game is seven for us. This is game is seven for us. You know what I'm saying? Get your mind right. Watch on this one. There's an upset in the making. There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of luck involved. Not so here. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 through four frustrating games, the Lakers had searched in vain for a way to break loose from Detroit's smothering defense. Now, in game five, with their season on the line, they still hadn't found the answer and still hadn't slowed down the hard charging Pistons. Ben Driven ahead of the crowd, up for the fly and Kobe Bryant topside, screen from Wall. Kobe left elbow, lost the handle, picked up by Rip. Rip for the drive, by himself, a throw down, he tomahawked it. With a cast that played their roles to perfection, the Pistons would provide their own Hollywood ending to one of the NBA's most unlikely sagas. The Prince threw it down in the palace. This is all Detroit right now. We spend a lot of time talking about what's wrong with the Lakers, but folks, I'm here to tell you, there's a lot right about the Detroit Pistons. They are winning this. The Lakers aren't losing it here tonight. The Pistons are digging in. They got the depth. They got the big men. They got the better basketball team. No doubt about it. On the run, yes. Yes. and one, Chauncey Phillips. The Pistons have broken this one wide open. You're a kid and you're watching the finals and the playoffs and you sit back in your room and you got your ball with you and you flicking the ball up like you're shooting and just wishing, you know, one day that you'll be in this position. And finally you are, you know, and finally, you know, I, I did and I am. But it's just a dream come true for me, man. But folks, where I play poker, a full house beats two aces any time, baby. And this is a five-man basketball team. Oh. I got no Down for a 14-point lead. You can't say enough for the way Larry Brown came in here from Philadelphia 
and he's got this team playing as one. No superstars, just a bunch of guys playing together, man. To be able to share an NBA championship with my brother, there's nothing like it. I know it'll make my mom proud. She's still alive. But it'll make my father proud. He's not here to see it. said, you know, Joe, it was three minutes left in the game. We were up by 25, and I was just looking at the clock thinking, now, can they score 26 points before we score one? And he said, I'm screaming and running around. He said, I look up, and all the players are just laughing at me. They're just, he said, they're just looking and laughing. He said, and at that time, I realized, OK, we have it won now. Chauncey holds it between the circles, snaps the pass to Rip. He'll step up, baseline left. Oh! Oh! Ben owns the night, folks, and so do the Pistons. I think these players represent everything good in our game. And even if we didn't win the championship, I'd feel exactly the same way. They do it right. They respect the sport. They care about young people that play our game. And I think it's the greatest testimony to teamwork and hard work. And as a result, we won a championship and they they took me along for the ride. Three seconds, two seconds, one second, it's over. It has happened. It's happened, Detroit. You believed in this team, and they have delivered a third NBA World Championship to the Motor City. An incredible story written by this Piston team this year. Stuff's moving so fast, you know. I mean, just a couple of years ago, I wasn't even in the playoffs. So to win it, wow, crazy. What's a sweeter victory than the NBA championship? Nothing. Your 2004 NBA champion, Detroit Pistons. Congratulations, and here's the trophy. The feeling you have right now, nothing. Nothing, nothing in the world of sports compares with a championship. The 2004 NBA Finals MVP, number one, Chauncey Billups. Hey, who else we got to be? We got to go back to retro teams and beat the 96 Bulls. I mean, is there anything else they want us to do? The 87 Lakers. Is there anybody else we got to beat to prove that we're good? Everybody out there, let me talk now. Y'all been doing all that. Y'all been talking long enough. Time for me to talk. Told you we was going to do it. Bet that. Yeah. Everybody deserves this, not just me. I wish I could cut it in 13 pieces and give it a little bit to everybody. Yeah, what is going on? I'm not in this game to be in the Hall of Fame. I'm not in here to get a scoring title. I'm not in here to set NBA defensive record. I came to the NBA to be in this game for moments like this to win championships. We shook up the world! What? We shook up the world! What? We shook up the world! That first day was 98% of the people out there who didn't believe in us, but guess what? David conquered Goliath. We did it, man. We did it the right. We did it as a team. A hard working group. No one gave us a chance. I'm about no practice. I'm about no practice tomorrow. We ain't got one with it. Hey, you don't want to film or nothing? Oh, no. You got none of that. None of that. Okay, here we go, guys. <laughs> Ain't no party like a Detroit party, cause a Detroit party don't stop. Oh, it's bananas. It's, it's good though. It's, it's, you can tell it's definitely good for the city. We got all the fans out here. Everybody supporting us. You can't get no better than that. Be a part of history like this and a part of this franchise. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I never had a dream this good, man. Unbelievable, man. I wish our palace held a million people so they can come to every game, man. These players represent Detroit as well as any team has ever represented the city. 
when Joe first traded for me and got me here, man, he said, this is going to be your home. And he said, Rip, if you want to win a championship, this is the place you're going to win a championship. And I told him, you ain't never told no lie. We love y'all. We're gonna see y'all again next year. Y'all give yourselves a hand and a big up because y'all the greatest of fans out there. Look around, you know, care about one another. Try to treat each other the right way and it's amazing what we all can accomplish. God bless you and go Pistons.